So as a matter of fact, all of the speakers were in a bar with David. That's how we actually get invited to this. Um, I am really, really excited to be here uh, to talk to you about something that's really close to my heart. Um, and that's, that's about uh, uh, as close as you're going to get. So I wanted to talk to you guys about something that I'm very passionate about um, and how to embrace your inner Fokker moments. Um, I've gone through the process. I know what you're going through. I don't want you to feel alone, and I'm going to give you my best process on how to get through this in the next uh, few days, few years, how long, however long it takes you to get through your own Fokker process. But the first thing you have to understand is where you stand in the circle of trust, right? How many people here have seen uh, Meet the Parents, right? Such a cool movie. One of my favorite movies of all time. Gaylord Fokker was such an incredible human being. He taught me so much in life, and now I'm here to teach that to you. And I am so excited also to tell you about how I learned this lesson, how these lessons stacked up throughout my life. Because as we're building content for different companies, we also have to understand how to earn their trust. How many people here are on LinkedIn? And how many people fear accepting somebody's friendship on LinkedIn? <laughs> my thought that goes through my head is, please God, let them not sell me in the next two minutes. It is the thing that we fear the most on Facebook and LinkedIn and every other network. When we first accept their response, have we accepted them into the true circle of trust? No. They're idiots. They sell us back. They have leads that they want to sell us. There are all these different things that happen. So how do we earn our way through? And especially, how do we do it when people are watching us publicly? We're in front of them doing these things that uh, you can do on Twitter. You can say anything you want, and people will see it. So what do you do? Well, let me take you back in time. This goes back about 17 years when I owned this incredible car called the Honda Civic. It, had, it was a green, green machine, as I called it. It was so cool. It had stick shift. It was cheap. It was great on mileage. It ran me all over the place. I'm in downtown San Jose. I, I move out from the ATM. I get into my Honda Civic. I'm going to go back to my office. And in downtown San Jose, if you're familiar with it, has this circular drive. So I drive around that circular drive around where the Fairmont is. I get into the center lane, I'm getting ready to go around and then back to my office when all of a sudden I see this car across the way light up on fire. And I was like, oh my God, what is happening? Then I see a second car, two cars. Second car lights up on fire and I'm like, what the heck is going on? So I'm, I'm panicking, I look across and I realize those are Formula One race cars. And I look ahead, and I'm behind a stone wall with a big fence over me, and hundreds of people are shouting at me, Go! I managed to get onto the Formula One race car track. I'm now working my way through the entire track. The only way out is the way I came in. I prayed. And I prayed hard because I did manage to make it out. I managed to get right out, and then I went and found the, found the, look, uh, the nearest parking lot, and I ditched my car because I thought I was going to be arrested. <laughs> and then I finally made my way back to the office. I went into my office. I closed the door, and I put my head, hands in my, um, my head in my hands, and I thought to myself, oh, my God. So my wife, who I work with, comes into the office, and she says, what happened? And I said, I was just in a Formula One race car um, a race, and she's like, again? You did this? Like, how many times is this going to happen to you? And, like, what more could... And, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I have... Um, I, I, going back just a, a couple years before that, she was, she was my uh, girlfriend at the time, and we're sitting there, we're watching Meet the Parents together, and she was laughing so hard, and I was sitting there not laughing. And finally, we got out of the movie, and she looked at me, and she goes, what's wrong? How did you not laugh at that movie? It's so funny. I said, because that's my life. My <laughs> life is this. Uh, the cat, yep. The roof, yep. The, the this, the that. And, and over time, I started to realize, in from, front of God and country, I will tell you now, I am Gaylord Fokker. 
And, and it took me a long time to, do, to come to those terms, but even more so, I had to start to think about what that means. I mean, I'm not just a bumbling idiot that's going to uh, screw up and make all these changes and challenges and things. Yes, I need to own my imperfections, but at the same time, what does it mean also to be human? Because we are human, and humans do make mistakes, and we do do things that are really challenging, and companies make <laughs> Okay. And companies make mistakes, and... And there are all these different things that we have to do as both companies and people because there is no such thing as perfection. It doesn't exist. So what's a Gaylord? What is a Fokker? F-O-C-K-E-R. For those of you who haven't ca caught on just yet, it's, it means to be genuine. It means to have a heart. It means to be imperfect and embrace those imperfections, whether it's on a racetrack or not. And it means to have a sense of humor. You want to embrace those moments, and as you're embracing those human moments, people are going to start to embrace you more. They're going to be more involved in what it is that you are doing. Let me take you back. Now, three years ago, I stood on stage and I gave this great presentation, and one of the screens was, there's no B2B, there's no B2C, it's human to human, just as David mentioned. It was actually here in San Francisco. I gave the presentation, I was excited, I stood in front of everyone. This one screen did exactly what this lady is doing right now. People lifted their cameras, took a picture, and over the next 48 hours, it went viral. It got over 80 million impressions. It had over uh, 2,000 bloggers blogging about it. It, had, it was translated into over 15 languages. And I realized I did something smart. No, I, I realized, <laughs> I realized that I need, I, that, that people were starting to connect with this philosophy, this philo <laughs> You guys are all over the place. So I was starting to connect with this philosophy that people really identified with the fact that this is humanity we're talking about right now. There are so many people trying to automate marketing. There are so many pe people trying to put in place this scalability, right? How many, how many acronyms can we throw into these different companies that are trying to scale and energize and synergize and advertise and... I don't know, vertize. And, and we, need to, we need to get back to the simplicity. And so human to human is really about simplicity, empathy, and imperfection. If we can combine those three things into any given company, we will have the most human company ever. Now, for this next story, I really want you to understand and know who this is. So I have to show you a picture up front. You guys are all aware of who NSYNC is, correct? And you all know everyone in this picture. Uh, most, most, uh, most of all, maybe Justin Timberlake on the left-hand side there. You've got Joey Fatone in the bottom right-hand corner. For the purposes of this story, as long as you know who those two people are, this will work great. Because here's what I wanted to tell you. That moments can happen anywhere. The unexpected moments are the ones that you need to celebrate. So you heard that I met David in an Irish bar in Ireland, and I was again on my way to another place here in um, another uh, country. And I was walking in Singapore, and these three locals wanted to take my picture. They asked me if Justin Timberlake was cool, to which I said he definitely had talent. They took more selfies with me. And then just as I'm walking away, they said they were so excited to meet Joey Fatone. <laughs> I don't see it. I don't know if you do. And I thought for a moment, just for a glimpse, just for a moment in time, that my social presence had gone global. <laughs> Not at all. Joey Fatone's presence was supported by me. So the question here is, what is the difference in the human economy, what is the difference between the dichotomy of personalization and automation? Is it humans and machines working together? Or is it humans versus machines? How will we proceed in the next few years? Well, before I get to that point, let's talk a little bit about the Cars Ride in Disneyland. Has anybody ever here been on the Cars Ride in Disneyland? Okay, well the Cars Ride is much like those rides that you go on in Disneyland where they go super fast all of a sudden and then it drops off at the very end. I'm on this ride with my family. And we, my daughter and my son are in the front, and my uh, wife and I are sitting in the back. And just as you drop off on the very fastest part of this route, 
the, the camera takes a picture um, at the very last second, and then you go through, when you get off the ride, you go into the, the um, you're ushered through the store first, where you can spend $5,000, <laughs> and then you go into um, a photo booth where they charge you $10,000 for the photo. And after 15 grand, you leave Disneyland happier than ever. Now, I took this picture, and this picture, for a brief moment, the car's ride turned my daughter into Jesus. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. Now, she's a very beautiful girl, but if you notice in the front center, her hair fit perfectly above her jawline and perfectly below her, uh, her, her lip. She had a full beard, and the camera caught it. How cool is that? So I posted it on Facebook, as I do all these other Fokker moments that I've enjoyed in my life, and I had some nice interactions, and we enjoyed this moment that, guess what? No computer could have ever caught. No computer would know that that was my daughter, that that was funny. Whether it was Jesus or my daughter, the computer couldn't tell. What's the point I'm trying to make here? The point is, is that being human is your competitive advantage, by sharing in the moment, by celebrating your inner Fokker moments, and actually bubbling those up and sharing them out will give you your competitive edge. A computer will never be able to do that. A computer will not be able to share emotion. Context. Wow, you're everywhere. So, in closing, I wanted to share this with you that I am Gaylord Fokker, and I know each and every one of you is also celebrating these moments. I'm going to encourage you to share them more. To embrace your inner Fokker, you have to be okay with imperfection. It's okay to laugh, and it's, it's how you earn your way into the circle of trust. Thank you so much. And trust oh. me when I say I held back on some stories. Okay, so my question is, and I think you're the perfect person to ask this to, oh. um, based off of what you said. Now I'm afraid I'm gonna offend you with my question. <laughs> um, when you make a mistake, like in public, let's say you publish something and you misspell it and it comes out funny or you say something wrong, yeah. like what, can you give an example of a time when you actually recovered from that and how you recovered? Yeah. <laughs> every day. Um, <laughs> you know, um, here's a good example. Are you, have you seen the U.S., are you aware of the U.S. Air tweet that went out um, a couple, it was now probably a year ago, a little over a year ago? The uh, U.S. Air um, social media team, uh, one person in particular, a social media uh, intern actually, um, po uh, took a copy of a of an airplane going into a woman's imp improper place. And, um, and they, well, proper for some people, but not impro <laughs> improper for the Twitter. Can I start over? So, <laughs> they, so the, the, the photo was supposed to be flagged and pasted, the URL was supposed to be pasted into a flagged area. Instead, uh, they pasted it into the next tweet that went out. <laughs> and the improper place or proper place was sent to everybody. And they screenshotted it and it took off. It went viral before they had, they took it down, but it was already out. Um, now, you would expect for them to fire the person that did that, but instead um, they actually came back publicly and said, we made a mistake and um, bless you. And here's what happened. And, and guess what? We think we have the best employee for never doing this again. So we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep that person on board. <laughs> so uh, I thought that was a great way to handle that, that situation. Other questions? Who else wants the box? Thanks. Hey, Brian. Yay! Hey, how are you doing, Ann? Hey, good to see you. Um, I, I really love the H2H concept and because I work with you and your wife, I get to see it, but I would love it if you could talk a little bit about how you've spun that out into relating to people. Like on Twitter, you guys do stuff with it. I have never really quite understood it. I would love to hear more about how you've traveled with the H2H concept. Traveled uh, around, like literally physically traveled? Uh, on the Twitters. On the Twitters. Yeah. Um, it, well, the, the H2H concept is, um, is, 
is about uh, bringing things back to a human place where people are engaging and having um, real conversations. So a lot of it uh, goes to uh, these, these company handles, these Twitter handles that are, that are just tweeting out and they're just broadcasting. And so this is saying, hey, let's get people behind these handles to actually be people, put use your initials, say something real, include humor. Um, you know, uh, best case, uh, best uh, thing that happened over the Super Bowl a year ago, GoDaddy was turned down for a, an, an ad or a commercial that they wanted um, because it was, it was improper and, and for whatever reason they pulled it the last second. And, um, and, the, and the last play of the game, um, uh, they, they recalled the play. And GoDaddy had given their social media community manager the ability to immediately say, we know what it's like to have your, um, your play recalled and because they had their commercial recalled. But they said that, and they were able to be human about it, and, and that's you know, what companies are able to, I think, do if they give the right power to, the, to people to be able to engage and say real things. So it's about that. that. It's, also, it's also looking at, um, at saying thank you. I think that most companies should, sorry, this is not this is more business than anything, but I think companies should also have thank you departments. Um, why should we have uh, support? Are, we would have less support if we had more thank you departments. Um, if we reached out to people and said, thanks for your business, we'd probably have less problems. So it's about really getting ahead of it, being proactive, engaging with real humans, and then turning your company handles also into real engagement as well. All right, really quickly, as a Fokker, what's your relationship like with your in-laws? You're out of time. You're okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Typical. <laughs> Typical. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going on a trip with my in-laws for two and a half weeks in Europe. Uh, it's starting a week from now. Can I let you know when I get back? Yes, please do. <laughs> Thank you. That'll do it. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.